This is a $60 optical spectrometer and is available on AliExpress. We have extensively tested this device and it can outperform products that cost 10 times as much. But, to be honest, it isn't exactly the most beautiful thing on the planet. And we found ourselves suffering from a certain amount of spectrometer envy. We all know it's wrong, but that didn't make us feel any better. So we decided to do something positive about it. Instead of spending a king's ransom to buy a flashy new device, we decided it would be better to pimp our spectrometer. Okay, let's crack on with this. The aim here is to try and improve the functionality and perhaps even the performance of this spectrometer. This is not just a case of putting a supercar body kit onto a Nissan Micra, we actually want to make this device more useful. That said, it really won't hurt to make it look less like a boring old black brick. If you have not already done so, we suggest that you watch the previous videos we made about this super cheap spectrometer. There is a lot of information in those that will help to make this video make more sense. First, let's start with adding an optical fiber input port. Usually, small professional spectrometers use an optical fiber input. This means that you don't need to move the entire spectrometer to the source of light you want to measure. Here, you can see how this low-power laser beam is carried down this cheap light pipe, a type that is used for digital audio. For spectroscopy, we need to use higher quality optical fibers, ones that can handle the wide bandwidth of the instrument, such as this one. This was actually the most expensive component we purchased for this project, and it has a usable bandwidth of 200 to 1200 nanometers. We also bought some special receptacles to allow the fiber optics to be connected to our spectrometer. We are using the SMA905 standard for this, it seems to be the most common interconnection standard used for this application. Fitting one of these connectors to the front of the spectrometer could not be easier, just drill four small holes, and then screw it to the enclosure. We are not going to delve into this too deeply, because later we made a change to the actual enclosure, so let's park this here, and move on to the next upgrade we made. Almost all spectrometers need to have an optical slit. In this case it is 3D printed into the chassis of the spectrometer itself. If we zoom in on the optical slit with a microscope, we can see that there is quite a lot of unevenness due to the basic properties of the 3D printing process. This optical slit width can determine the optical bandwidth of the spectrometer, at least, it can, until you hit the limits imposed by the inherent point spread function. The 3D printed optical slit is about 300 microns in width, so we wanted to make something that was a little narrower, and with straighter edges. Normally, this can be done with a pair of razor blade edges. We can't buy those types of old-fashioned razor blades here in China, so we thought we would try using the blades from a disposable razor. So, after removing the blades from the razor, we got on and drilled out the old 3D printed slit. We figured that we would make a special slit holder to allow it to be correctly aligned after assembly. The green part is permanently attached to the spectrometer chassis and the orange part has the custom slit attached to it. In this way the alignment can be adjusted. We have read that when using optical fiber inputs, that the optical slit is often unnecessary, and this arrangement allows it to be removed altogether. It was at about this point, 
that we realized that we had screwed up. Disposable razor blades were never going to work, and that actually, there was a far easier way to do this. So, we have used 50 micron copper foil to create the optical slit. It has a self-adhesive backing and is really easy to fit. The new slit is about 200 microns in width, and although the edges are not perfect, it is better than the original 3D printed version. We decided to test this upgrade with our sodium lamp, as a test source. We wanted to see if there was any improvement, in resolution of the spectrometer using this new optical slit. We have made measurements on this lamp many times before, and using this spectrometer. So we have lots of data to compare with. If we look at the spectral data from the old slit and the new one, we cannot really discern any noticeable difference. But if we zoom in on the two sets of data, in the new graph, we can see a slight dip in the sodium peak. Perhaps this is just an artifact of something, or perhaps we are starting to see the sodium double line being resolved. Anyway, we are pretty confident at this stage, but we have not made the resolution any worse, so we will count that as a success in itself. One of the problems with measuring bright, or collimated sources such as lasers, is that they can generate many reflections within the spectrometer, and cause measurements to fail. The way to avoid this situation, is to employ a cosine correction filter. This is just an overly complicated way to describe a simple diffusing layer. We found this one on Taobao for around $2. It even came with an infrared filter. So, we designed a simple holder for the diffusion filter, that allows it to interface to an SMA905, fiber optic connector. After printing it out, all we need to do is to paint and assemble the adapter. So, now we have our very first, fiber optic spectrometer accessory. This one, is ideal for measuring strong visible sources like lasers or bright lamps. As well as the visible light diffuser adapter, we also took advantage of the additional infrared filter, and built another one that was for the infrared part of the spectrum. I suspect that in the future, we will take advantage of this when we build test fixtures, for other optical experiments. This spectrometer has seen a lot of use, and is now looking a bit battered and bruised. So, we figured it was time to tart it up. Basically, we are going to give it a makeover. The plan was simple, remove the peeling paint of the case with a good dose of sandpaper, and then give the enclosure a new coat of paint. There are a lot of steps we basically didn't bother with. But, this isn't an arts and craft channel. If anyone is thinking about writing comments, to let us know what type of primer we should have used, or that our spray painting technique is not correct, well please don't waste your time. We are genuinely not interested, in learning more about the art of watching paint dry. When the case was finished, the results were pretty disappointing. It might have a new coat of paint, but it is still a dull old black brick. Frankly it wasn't giving us a boner, so we were going to have to do some more work. We want this to be a pub grade spectrometer. As all engineers know, when you are down the local boozer, girls are very impressed by a guy with a cool looking spectrometer. Well, at least they are in my favorite bar. The girls use them to check for counterfeit bills. This is my favorite bar, here the girls like guys with cool looking spectrometers. Obviously, a wallet full of cash helps out too. 
do what I want because I can and don't cause I wanna. Anyway, back to the task in hand. We design a nice new case for this spectrometer, that is 100% pub grade. Frankly, we should have done this right from the get-go, but better late than never. We tried printing this out on a few different 3D printers, but as usual, the Bamboo Labs machine produced the best results. We removed the entire chassis from the little garden spectrometer, it was just a much simpler way to handle this process. Everything fitted together wonderfully, which to be honest, is rather unusual on this channel. It isn't exactly the most beautiful piece of industrial design ever created, but it is far better than the original enclosure. We sprayed the inside of the case black, to cut down on internal reflections. And with the addition of the new optical slit assembly, and the SMA connector, the thing is basically ready. Comparing with the original, there isn't really much more to say. Just to make sure that this upgraded spectrometer, gets fully qualified as being officially pub grade, we got a nice instrument case for it. The foam was cut to accommodate the spectrometer and the accessories. And when the case is closed, it is both beer proof and bar brawl resistant, though we plan on doing some further testing on those particular claims. So, now we have a super cheap spectrometer, but which has an optical fiber input port. However, that doesn't mean that it can no longer be used for direct measurements, it functions perfectly well without any optical fiber attached. The SMA connector does restrict the field of view, essentially collimating the incoming light, but that's probably a good thing. As further improvement to this device, we are going to change the cable. Type B cables, such as the one supplied, are horribly thick and cumbersome. We found a Type B to Type C adapter, and used it with a nicer USB cable to create an acceptable solution. It even fits into our beer proof case. The only real downside to making these changes, is that the overall sensitivity of the spectrometer will be reduced. And the only risks involved, are the replacement costs of a cheap spectrometer. If you are going to try and do this change for yourself, then have fun, but don't come crying to us if you screw it up. The only really irreversible change is drilling out the optical slit, which is easily replaced with the solution we have shown. The option of adding more accessories later, is the main reason we made this upgrade. Repeatability between experiments is very helpful. Obviously, it doesn't hurt to beautify the device a little, but don't expect it to get you laid. And, if anyone wants a copy of the 3D files we used in this project, either in the original SketchUp format or as SDL files, feel free to drop us an email, and we will send these to you as soon as we get around to it. Anyway, that's all we have for you today. We hope you enjoyed our little video, or at least found some parts of it interesting. If you think we deserve it, then please feel free to give it a like. And you could always hit subscribe, if you want to see more content like this. In a change from our normal practice, we have enabled YouTube advertising. We are saving up for a camera. All of the photography you have seen in our videos, has been captured using a cell phone, the limitations of which, is starting to limit the kind of content we can produce. We wish to express our sincerest gratitude to the following viewers, for their donations towards our camera fund. This is still a hobby channel, so we can say what we want, and YouTube's algorithm can go and get f***ed. Thank you for your time. Thank <laughs> you.